Today I'm going to demonstrate painting flowers with acrylic paint. You will need green, white, yellow, blue, and three brushes. A large, flat, one-inch brush, a medium-sized, two large, flat, round brush, and a small, round brush for your petals. So the first step is to cover your canvas with green. I like to let this layer dry if I can. It's not important, but it is kind of nice if you can get an underpainting. Like with any acrylic painting, a little bit of an underpainting can really help your colors pop in the end. So here I am just filling in the canvas with green paint. And then once that's finished, I add just dots of paint all over my canvas. I add a little bit of green, a little bit of blue, a little bit of yellow, and a little bit of white. I try to add these dots so that they're far away from each other, so that the blue dots are far away from each other and then the yellow dots are far away from each other. This gives me a little bit more range in my background painting. Now what I'm going to do is stroke my paint. I'm going to blend it using a round flat brush. The reason I like to use a round brush here is because it gives these uh, brush strokes, uh, it doesn't give them a sharp end, it gives everything a really soft edge. And I am flipping my brush from one side to another with every stroke here. So I'm kind of going in a little bit of an upside down V pattern. I'm going down on one side, flipping my brush over, going the other way, flipping my brush over, going the other way. And I just keep doing this over and over again until I have a really nice painterly background. I want this background to feel like maybe it's a meadow, maybe it's a, a bunch of flowers in behind the flowers I'm painting. I just want to give the illusion that this background is natural, it's green, it's healthy. Uh, but I don't actually want to depict any flowers in this background. I want those flowers to be in the foreground. I want them to stand out. But this nice uh, textured background that I'm creating will give that a nice setting. It'll give those flowers a place to exist that makes sense and makes them feel even more like flowers, makes it feel like, like a scene of flowers. Now this is a version of impressionistic painting. I'm not literally painting a field of flowers, but I'm painting the impression of a field of flowers in the background. And then once I'm done that, I take just a little bit of white paint and I start to paint in my petals. This is my first background layer. And I push, pull, and twist. And I'm going to do this for every petal. So I get a little bit of white paint, push, pull, twist. Push, pull, twist. I'm starting to twist the other way now because these petals are kind of, kind of coming out the other side so they feel like they're facing a different direction. So push, pull, twist. I have not cleaned my brush. When I get the white paint, I do scrape off a little bit of the excess green paint that I pick up, but I haven't cleaned my brush yet. I want these petals to feel semi-transparent. I want that green to come through. Um, at the very tips where they're mostly white, that's good because those are going to be in highlight, but the rest of the petal would be in shadow because it will eventually be covered up by the second layer of petals that we put in here. So I'm going to complete this uh, painting. I'm going to paint in maybe five or six flowers here. I'm doing the exact same thing every single time I do a flower petal. I'm doing push, pull, twist. Push, pull, twist. Push, pull, twist. I sometimes find myself saying that stuff out loud as I'm doing it almost out of habit. So I'm just continuing to do that. You can do this as long as you have wet paint. Once your paint starts to dry, you no longer get that nice blend in there. Uh, so you can't really get that effect when your paint is dry. But as long as your paint is wet, you will be able to kind of get that, that shadowy look to your petal. Where it's bright along the edges because you've pushed out that wet paint. But then it's uh, picking up that green from the background throughout the center because as you're pulling and you're twisting, you're kind of scraping the paint from underneath and you're really blending on the spot there. So you're able to create this, this illusion of light on the outside and shadow in the center. I just painted a flower that's closed. My flowers so far have been open, but this one is going to be not so much closed, but maybe it's facing us from the side. So we can't actually see the inside of that top flower. 
my paint is very wet, so I'll be able to do flowers for a little while here. I'll be able to add quite a few to this painting, which is nice. So push, pull, twist, just over and over again, pulling everything towards the center. And then as you twist, you pick up your brush and that gives you a little tip, a little edge to your flower. So that's just what I'm doing here. I don't know if you guys could hear, but my daughter's in the background asking for things. So she might periodically uh, say something throughout this video. So here I am again, push, pull, twist. You can see I'm scraping my brush off every time. Push, pull, twist. Getting those under, under layer of the flower, those bottom petals that are gonna be largely covered up, um, but still somewhat visible. It gives our flower a little bit of texture. Very rarely when you see a flower does it have all of its petals completely separate. Um, usually a flower has petals that overlap one another. Okay, so now it's time to get into that second layer. So for this second layer, we want lots of white paint, but we still do the exact same thing. We go push, pull, twist. And the other big difference with this top layer of petals is that we want to make sure we don't have any of that residual green paint on our brush. So we kind of try to get it off there as best we can. Sometimes I just scrape it off. Sometimes I use a rag and I wipe my brush down with every single brush stroke. But you can see here how those second petals, the second layer is kind of sitting on top of the first layer. And that's because A, we have way more paint on our brush and B, the paint is dried just a little bit. So you do want this, uh, when you do this layer, you want the paint to be tacky. You still want it to be wet, but you don't want it to be super wet like we did for that first layer. We don't want it to blend quite as much. So here I'm just adding the last few petals to this particular flower. And I'm going to do this for every single flower on this painting. So you're going to see quite a few examples of this. I won't show you every single one, but uh, I will show you most of them here. So push, pull, twist. Just always layering, grabbing a lot of paint for every petal just to make them pop a little bit. I actually had quite a few um, petals on this particular flower in my first layer. So I'm covering some of them up on purpose here just so that the flower still has some variety to it. Now this flower right here is a beautiful example. There's, you know, how many petals? seven petals to start, maybe eight petals. So I'm able to go in between those petals to lay down my next layer. And that's really what you want. You want uh, just enough petals on your bottom layer so that you can lay in your top layer and still see a little bit of those petals coming through on the bottom, but you're not covering everything up with your top layer either. So this is a really nice example of, uh, of a bottom layer and a top layer working well together. Just fitting in those those uh, thicker, top, brighter petals in between the existing underpainting petals. Now I'm doing that uh, kind of closed off flower there at the top, just added a few petals and jumping over to yet another flower, adding more petals in this. A flower again was quite full, so I'm kind of overlaying my petals on top of existing petals here so that the flower doesn't feel too white. Uh, we definitely want there to be a little bit of variety within the petals. You don't want it to look like a white blob. You want it to have some definitions, some highlights, some shadows, all of that good stuff. All right. So this is how you paint wet on wet flowers. This is one of many ways to paint wet on wet flowers. Um, it's my personal favorite. I like the single brush stroke for a petal. I think that's very effective. And I like how it has that painterly texture to it. If I close my eyes, I can still see exactly where all my flowers are just by feeling the painting. Well, that's it for this painting. So thank you for watching and good luck with your own artistic creations. You can find me on Facebook at Creations by Kendra. And if you're interested in online lessons, just send me a message, okay? Thanks a lot. Bye.